Let's kick it off with one of the hottest names in free agency with my boy Trey Burton. He's gotten a ton of hype right now. The Bears are interested. Lots of people kicking the ideas around of, of where he may or may not land. I look at it this way. Um, we're always chasing this tight end position. Always. Guys, they're, they're like unicorns. You're, you're, you're trying to wrangle them, trying to get them on your team, get those consistent points when really over the years there's only been a, a couple of guys who are mainstays at consistent tight end points. Um, and people are hoping and praying that Trey Burton is going to be one of those kind of guys. Maybe he goes to Chicago like we just mentioned and Nagy gets him who was you know with Kelsey and maybe that's why he wants him that kind of athletic tight end oh if you start talking trey burton and you want to talk about the guy that's been coaching kelsey for a couple of years that'll get your blood pumping. oh for sure and this the, i don't think there's another human being on planet earth who was maybe more into riding the trey burton train of like i don't under, can't understand why the eagles don't give this guy more run well finally they gave him a little bit more run and now he's burst onto the scene i guess my biggest question is is if you do have trey burton on your team right now are you holding him or are you are you trading him away? Because like I like I said, this is one of the hardest positions to get consistent results from, and it's really only the same couple of guys every year. So do you want to ring the register on on Trey Burton? Which I think actually I'm leaning towards that way. As much as I love this guy and have been ringing his bell for a while, I think I might be the the hype is the hype is hot. Right, right. Well, maybe maybe I might be... The hype is pretty hot. Any form you look at, they're talking about them, the Twitters, the Roto Worlds. Uh, I went looking through in our 12-man dynasty that the three of us are in to see if he was on the uh, waiver wire or whatever. He's already on my team. So That's solid. Super pumped about that. Uh, if you're asking... You're welcome. I'm definitely going to hold. <laughs> you're welcome. I'm welcome? Yeah. Hey, you're not the only one that likes Trey Burton. Uh, you don't even wouldn't even know who Trey Burton was if you weren't on this podcast. <laughs> I got some Zach. I got some Zach Ertz. Okay, I knew the backup <laughs> guy behind him was, and he showed well when Hertz Ertz got hurt and he played pretty good. Sure did. Jumped in there and showed in the red zone. Got his five touchdowns this year. He didn't blow it up from like like a total catches perspective for the whole year, but Zach Ertz was in there doing that thing. But I think the the big thing about like Trey Burton, like I I, I play we play a bunch of um, FFPC leagues around here. Like Casey said, it's hard to find a consistent tight end in any league format, but much less you get a one point five. The one point five helps it out a it little helps bit. Helps it out. So when you get a tight end that's working, it works even better, and they're easy to start and to flex. And I have four out of my five leagues in the uh, FFPC that I, I have Burton, and I've. I'm torn on trying to just I've, – I've looked around in some of the trades and stuff you see for Burton. I saw somebody get two third-rounders. I saw somebody get a second-rounder, just a straight-up Trey Burton trade, not when he's a kicker. You could use him right now to b maybe be that guy that pushes a trade over the edge if you're trying to trade up for some really premium talent and you're trying to make a you know kind of a half-ass offer, if you will. Maybe Trey Burton is a nice little rider there on the back end of that thing to give you some credit. But for me, I think – Probably 100% of the time, Trey Burton was absolutely free. I don't know. If you bought him in the last month, he wasn't free. But most of the like, most likely, in every league I got him, I picked him up off the waivers this year. Sure. So there's nothing wrong with turning that into a second-round pick. Absolutely. I bark at Jay Wayne every year about doing that with some of his guys. But – Mulder. If, but you if you know the free agency coming around there's just such if he goes to chicago and gets that narrative of right. oh well this is travis kelsey's coach you know i feel like right now is you know the last week of february as we're going to the last week of week of february here i just feel like that might be a little early on the sale sure it's still premium time to buy maybe and i, I for no. me, see i don't think you can buy right now i think everyone's trying to prod around and send these garbage offers of being like well maybe i can get trey burton for cheap before he goes somewhere but that's no that, that, well, the cat's I said, out of the bag. You're right. I said that wrong. I said premium time. It's premium time to buy was when you picked him up for free. When you got him for an absolute one dollar on the on the fab budget. That was and I did that on a lot of my teams. I like you said, it's just so hard to find a tight end. I'm I'm a, I want to hold him a little bit longer and see sure. what happens, see where he goes, see if I can justify. I got one team where I really need him to just play for me, and I got another team where I got like four tight ends, and any of them could be sold at any time for major profit. And Trey Burton might be on that list. Yeah, I, th I think probably as soon as he lands somewhere would be, or I mean, it'll be he'll be very sellable all off season. Is I guess more yeah. how I should have stated it when I started, and and I would probably sell as the hype builds and yeah. he and he lands somewhere and there's the roto world blurb comes out and all of a sudden right you know that's kind of what happened just now why everyone's 
sorting through and see if they can pick them up for cheap. Well, that's not happening. The blurb already came out and there's right. going to be other summertime training camp blurbs where, oh, he looks so good and they want to feature Trey Burton. And then yeah. it's going to be like, all right, give me give me 110 yeah. and you can have Trey Burton or what, you know. Yes, but yeah, specifically speaking, you can definitely look for a late first round for a guy that's a, a tight end that's coming around and getting hot. I think it would be a good idea to not, you're not going to be, in a hurry to sell you shouldn't be yeah, in a hurry no, to sell. you're right like you said you got all off season to do this you got the mini camps you got the training camps and and preseason coming around and I, I think trey burton will continue to just rise in value which is basically what you just said so you have you have trey burton on on your team before we go on this last one it just are you are you gonna ride it out or are you just you're gonna try to ring the register well i'm you know jay wayne's a holder i'm the holder of all all my players uh i mean I'm, i want to see where he goes for sure I'm not. I'm not ringing a register before I find out where he goes. Um, but then, I mean, depending on the spot, I could be. I'd, I'd be down to to turn my waiver wire addition into a, a second round pick. I guess if I guess it's as solid as swing in the third round as you can get. So I'd probably hold for a third, and and I'd probably move him for a second. But I'm excited to see where he goes. I think I'm not moving him for any less than a first. And that's not that's not a it's not a bad call. I mean, a second would be a nice easy pickup right now. But that's what I'm saying. I think if you hold it a little longer, you'd be able to get better than that. And or you some can people, use it for a good kicker and a fantastic kicker. Exactly, in a trade. exactly. You can make you can make that three for one where you're going and getting somebody that's a first round startup pick. You know, and and some people are just they like just like you. It's been become very very popular lately to just punt on the quarterback situation, and some people punt on the tight end situation, and they pick up the Cameron Brates of the world and all that good stuff. But some people are like, I want to be one of the people that has a tight end because it's so hard yeah. to get one. And it is true if you find a tight end, like you know, if you picked up Kelsey a couple years ago or Zach Ertz came to life for you this year, if you have a tight end scoring points, it makes it a lot easier to win every week because yeah. most people, six out of twelve of your people in the league, are not going to be yeah. scoring points. Delaney Walker scored some points for you this year. It's very hard to find that tight end when you pay points. the premium for him and it works out right it's fantastic it's but it's all the times where you pay the the premium or maybe the next tier of kind of payment on a mm-hmm. on a tight end and it doesn't work out that you're like damn it this is the worst i know and it's and what happens is if you get a spot like this this is a moment in time where a tra- in the next couple months trey burton goes to a team like a Chicago, so you can do that narrative with Nagy. If he goes to a team that doesn't really have a ton of playmakers, so you can say, okay, well, they brought him in and paid him some decent money, and they're going to throw him the ball. If it doesn't work out, right, and you're sitting here in December, and he's caught 30 more passes this that year, this coming year, you're like, dang it, I could have sold and made yeah. some money, you know? Because I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure that he's good. I like his athletic pro, but I'm not. I don't know. I don't. I have no idea, really. Well, like, he looks know, good so. out there for Philadelphia. But in a small, you know, like right. with 30 catches, he hadn't looked good at 75 catches. Right. But threw a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> sure. <laughs>